Ladies and gentlemen, joining <laughs> us tonight is the man, the myth, the legend, and the man with so many drunk stories, Michael Canick. Michael, how are you doing, man? Fantastic. Just trying to make more story. There you go, man. Also, I like jo- join him. <laughs> also joining us is former WWE star, <laughs> tag team champion, and current Impact star, Brian Myers. Brian, how are you doing, man? What's up, guys? I, I knew Connect would be here, so I didn't want to come empty-handed. <laughs> Scott, and I might have had a few dude, of these with Heath. Dude. I might have had a few of these with Heath down in the hotel bar before I came up here. But... <laughs> <laughs> I feel I need to step away and go get a Los Guerreros or something, man. Oh, nice. Like I'm feeling <laughs> left out here. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, cheers. Good. Thanks for having me, got me on, guys. No Anytime. problem. Hey, Brian, can you confirm a lot of Canick's uh, drunken stories? By the way, he's had yes, so many. I, can. Uh, I think uh, I, can. I think I actually. <laughs> I just said this to him, like in a personal conversation. I said, like, when you first meet Kinnick, he just tells you all this, all these stories, and you're like, look at him, like, this little guy, like, no way it's happened, or <laughs> this or that, but it's all true. It's all true. Like, it's kind of crazy. You know, but, you know, it's it's funny because that's not the first time I've heard that. I've heard that same response from multiple people that have gotten to know me throughout the years. It happens because you I mean, you'll come out of like, to back it up. You'll too. literally come out of nowhere with some insane story, and you're like, "What the? F- what are you talking? What? <laughs> Why were you hanging out with Mike Tyson? Or you know what I mean? Like, like, Where did that shocked. tiger come from? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, before we get started, guys, uh, why don't you get the plugs out of the way? Oh man, connect. You want to take this one? Yeah. Uh, Majorpodmerch.com. You can get all your major bendies. Uh, big rubber guys, you got um canicsmerch.com where you can get some Brian Myers exclusive. Ooh, shorts. I like that. Like that. <laughs> and, and if you want to follow me, it's uh canic89 throughout all socials and uh major bendies on Instagram. And big rubber guys, we don't, we, we didn't do a separate. Oh, okay, you want to do all right, I it's, got you. Yeah, that's a little weird name. <laughs> Too confusing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brian, so this is your first time on the show. Uh, I do have one quick f- question for you because I do want to get into the big river guys. Do you have any memories with LJNs back in the day? Like, do you remember the first time you ever got one? Because I know you're a few years S- younger than us. So. Yeah. So, but I, I don't have like. It was just funny because Matt and I are the same age. And he has these weird, like, vivid memories of LJNs, and he had a collection and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I cannot recall seeing one on the shelves. Oh, like wow. at all. Like my, I, I think my my love of Hasbro's come from that. They're like my gateway to my love of wrestling because they're literally like hand in hand. Like simultaneously, I discovered wrestling and I discovered the Hasbro's were coming out. Like, I want to say there was like a month or two of excitement until I finally got them and the rest is history. And then uh, I remember one day my dad came home from work and he wanted to surprise me with something and he gave me the LJN referee. Oh, the, that was the first one. Yeah. But I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? All my hats are sort of this big and I got this <laughs> giant referee now. I was so confused. I mean, it was a very nice gesture looking back on it, you know, now that I'm a parent, but like, I was like, what the, like, this doesn't work at all. This guy's like <laughs> double the size of everybody. But that was the one and only LJN I had as a child until, I mean, I became, you know, a super fan and very much a historian of wrestling. And I went back and I, I have every single one mint loose right now in my collection. Yeah. Nice. When you were younger, did you ever intertwine the Hasbros and Galoobs? Oh, of course. The Hasbro's and Gloobs, I, I thought, could mix. I always thought, like, Bone Crunchers and WCW mm-hmm. Toy Biz and ECW could mix. You know, there was a nice era there. And then Titan Trons threw everything for a loop. But, um, <laughs> to say the yeah, least. I, I always thought I, th- I always thought it was sweet that Gloobs and Hasbro's kind of mixed. And if you look back on it, they both lines really age well because they're they're very um, pretty, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like, a lot makes of complete sense. They have the, a shine to yeah, and the sculpts of the Galoobs are pretty, especially for that time, like pretty, I mean, there's no articulation, but they're still pretty really nice uh, looking figures. 
That's yeah, that sting stands up as one of the best of all time, I think. Oh yeah, it's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. It's Absolutely. such a beautiful figure. Those galoos were just beautiful. I mean, even the mm. different uh tights or trunks that they threw them in and for the UKs and stuff just came yeah. out beautiful. So yeah. yeah. Michael, how have you been, man, since you've last been on? I mean, just packing us the L orders all day. <laughs> he's, a, he's a machine. Is that he what is. He is. <laughs> That's not what you were saying earlier. <laughs> I can't fucking stand seeing her face anymore. <laughs> so many orders. Okay, that was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I packed so many fucking orders already. <laughs> uh, well, that, that's a good good problem, Gnick. <laughs> how sure. many mm. how many are you up to today so far, man? Um, I'm averaging around about a hundred orders a day. Ooh. Wow. Wow. That is a good problem That's... to have for sure. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And it's it's called champagne problems. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, that's a hundred orders that I pack and drop off. I do a little bit more um, towards the night, and, and yeah, this is just what I do. <laughs> and you Guys, just I don't, I don't, this is really pulling back the curtain. People don't realize this. Knick doesn't drive, so he walks packages. To the post office. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's pretty insane. I get uphill both I ways. Get, <laughs> he's got a hot I, potato in his pocket to keep him warm. It's pretty insane. I get uh I, I well I was buying bags before, then I found out you can get free bags from the post office. And uh I just filled them up and I walked them over. I, I live about two blocks away from the post office. <laughs> it's and pretty ridiculous considering he owns a toy company and he's constantly shipping out horses. <laughs> Pretty insane, actually. <laughs> so, and, so when Brian said that, did anybody else see Michael with a red flyer wagon just walking <laughs> down the street? To, yeah, like, that'd to be the awesome. Place? I, That's like what we I have. I have a wagon. A oh, dude that Major Pod <laughs> technically got me. It was free with an order, but oh my god, <laughs> we've got to get that thing <laughs> customized, man. I dude, we'll get you an it. Uber card, and you could just have an Uber roll up, throw all the boxes in the dude's car, ask him to drop them for you. It it probably takes me about five minutes to walk over to the post office, drop everything off, and walk back. So it's like, it's not that bad. And Vine has seen the garbage I eat and the amount I drink. I need the exercise, yeah. guys. He's not, yeah, he's not exactly the, the epitome of health. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Scott and Michael have been on the show before, like confessing their love for Taco Bell. So they definitely, oh, yeah, they definitely have that oh. in common. <laughs> Dude, that new steak and bacon grilled cheese burrito. Mm-hmm. Steak yes. and bacon. Yes, I, uh, sir. Guys, I'll admit Taco Bell was like my be all end all. And then I had like a drunken night in the city probably about 15 years ago. And there used to be a Taco Bell in Penn Station, I'm sure Knick is very familiar with. And I want, I just like threw it up, had diarrhea, whatever. And then like it went away. Like my like crave, like I used to crave it one all the time. But for some reason, the past like year or two, it's come back a little bit. Oh, oh. yeah. I, I have made. I have made love to a crunch wrap after an uh, independent show. <laughs> I've, Driving I've, home a I've, couple times. Yeah. I've they seen you pretty drunk ordering Uber Eats and ordering these insane <laughs> Taco Bell orders. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I lo- okay, so what's what? the most amount of money you've dropped on a Taco Bell order? Got to know. Oh, man. I don't Actually, you know what's funny? This was like uh, probably like 10 years ago. Well, that, oh, that was embarrassing. Oh, dude. <laughs> I can tell that's that story. Uh, we had a live major pod show at Kowloon's in Boston. It's like a famous uh, Chinese restaurant that's massive. And then they, in COVID, they built this like giant tiki bar outside that they never took down. So now there's like this football field sized tiki bar outside. It's like ridiculous. Nice. So we're at, we're out there with everybody post show, and we're just having the best time ever. A very intoxicated. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna get everybody Uber Eats talk about dude. I put in like a. <gasps> insane order like over a hundred dollars in taco bell like just because i was like picturing myself coming back like a king like with all these bags of taco bell and just <laughs> handing out taco bell to everybody having the best time and i'm i like stumble down to the front i'm waiting i'm waiting the guy finally comes he hands me like like a ziploc bag size thing of taco bell and speeds off uh-huh. and it's like it's not brian m's order it's like brian h's order or something and i'm like no, I, mean, oh, like, dude. I was so defeated. I'm like, I can't show my face back there. I fucking just told everyone that was coming back with Taco Bell. And I'd like, I like thought for a second, I went, 
and I just ran to my hotel room. And I, ate the, <laughs> the, 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 I ate the three tacos that were in there, wherever it was. Whatever. <laughs> Called it a night. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good movie. Somebody got Taco Bell. Well, I had to put in the like complaint to get my money back too, because I was like, "Wait, I'm not paying a hundred dollars for three tacos." Oh hell no, <laughs> hell no. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that happened to me today with Thai food. What Uber did? eats, is, got- dude. Trust me, I Uber eats on the road because it's just kind of like the way of life. It's a it's a roller coaster ride. You never know what the hell's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so Brian, I know you guys have been doing the show for quite a while now. Has there been that one thing that has just shocked you that you didn't even know going into it? Uh, that one surprise, like. I don't know. Uh, uh, there was a figure that was supposed to be made, or anything like that. In that, in that regard, I mean, I was gonna say everything has been a shock because I, I just did it because Matt and I were bored and love figures and we wanted to talk about them. You know, I never thought about any, all the things that would go along with it. Yeah, yeah, you guys know. Mm-hmm. And it's just, uh, you know, obviously there's always fun discoveries or people come out of the woodwork. And I mm-hmm. think I do love when we find things that we never never knew existed. Mm-hmm. Now that I collect autographed Hasbro's, I love when people come out of the woodwork and offer me signed Hasbro's or whatever, <laughs> cut deals or whatever. That excites me very much. But um, I think, man, maybe my favorite discovery was finding that old San Francisco toy makers um, guide where we found the shark figure and the renegade. Mm-hmm. Oh. I thought that was that was pretty cool because, like, like I said, Matt and I are pretty deep, deep wrestling figure historians, and even that like threw us for a loop. Like, what? Because there was yeah. no proof. There was no proof of that up until that point. Yeah, like that's was, crazy. Scott and I always talk about it. It's the LJNs, like when we were when we found out they were supposed to have articulated style. You know, we never yeah, knew that's, that. yeah, that's ma- that, imagine right. Oh, dude, that yeah. just blew blew us away because that's our childhood right there. You know, yeah. E- even the uh, the episode of the toys that made us, where the guys explain that like the LJNs were an accident. They were just the, they were the two ups. They were yep. supposed to be scaled down, and then the, yep. Whoever the buyers were like, these are awesome. And they were like, yes, they are awesome. Like, we just made <laughs> yeah, we meant to ginormous do that. recipe. But if you look back on it, like, what a decision that changed like the history of like wrestling figure fandom, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because if that failed, who knows if we'd even be sitting here talking about wrestling figures? And I don't think they'd be as unique because like all '80s figures are like that four and a half inch scale to a degree, mm-hmm. right? So that's what made LJNs and wrestling figures so larger than life and different. Yeah. yeah 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 exactly that was like the uh he-man one where it was just pure on um, toys that made us it was just pure debauchery after debauchery and i just loved it <laughs> I think i'm was... not a big he-man guy I'm lo- i've am i learned over the years through you know the show and all our friends uh-huh. i couldn't believe that episode where it was like he-man was just like a complete cash grab like this guy's gonna be snake head and he has <laughs> snake on and, like it's yeah. just a way to make literally a way to make money and make toys like there's no rhyme or reason into the creativity of like what they're doing i couldn't believe that yeah. were you a gi joe fan too my brother was a gi joe guy so i played i had gi joes in the house and I play, my brother's a little bit older and i always had they're always around and i played with them a, a ton when i was a kid what God. does your toy collection look like now outside of wrestling figures uh it's pretty much just sports stuff honestly it's new york sports stuff mcfarland starting lineups um i was oh okay I was really marking out for the starting lineup reboot from Hasbro. They only got that one NBA line in. We've, we've heard that it's on pause, which is super disappointing to me because they even announced that there was going to be an NFL line. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. um, so I'm very butthurt about that. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's my only other real wheelhouse. Um, I thought about, like, Turtles and Power Rangers and things I've collected, like, as a kid, but I just I just can't do it. The, yeah. the wrestling stuff I have takes up so much real estate. There'd be like almost no point. Yeah. I hear so you. I take So I take it you didn't get the Trey Young NBA starting lineup. I actually bought every single one. Oh, you I did? Thought they were cool. Yeah. 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 They are. And, and I'm a big trading card guy. They came with a real official Panini NBA trading card that's valuable too. So yeah. I thought it was a pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Michael, are you a huge uh, sports fan as well? I yeah, do bad sports. Man. <laughs> he's, he's taking up pickleball yeah right yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually I did play pickleball for the first time in California and... it's alright um, <laughs> but no I'm not really too big into sports I did get the, the starting lineups of uh, LeBron James just because I like LeBron James mm-hmm. um, but aside from that I'll watch basketball when it's on like at a bar and stuff but 
Yeah, that LeBron. I thought the, I thought the uh, starting lineups with the real sneakers was such a cool thing. I mean, I, the no tax was, was rough, but. But the real sneakers was a nice yeah. trade off. I feel like yeah. that was by yeah. chance. Have you gotten the Jordan Mafex? No, I'm. I've just become a. No. I'm, now that I tag with a uh, Moose, he's a big sneakerhead. He's turned me into a sneakerhead, which I never thought would happen. But I wouldn't say I'm a sneakerhead, but I'm much more sneaker conscious than I was. <laughs> yeah, and I, I I appreciate it a lot more. Check out the Jordan Mafex figures. Those come with Jordan ones. They're just beautiful but oh, anyway. oh i think i know what you're talking about actually. oh god they're so yeah. good they're so yeah. good man all right let's change topics over to the major bendums what has been the latest michael yeah i mean we just finished doing a pre-order for macho man which was supposed to be the macho man that was released uh back in the early 90s which um, was another another and- major pod discovery too that we weren't too sure of which was yeah, it, it, that that Macho Man was supposed to be in Series One, Just Toys, Bendems, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. And we found the artwork and the you know even the trading card artwork, which we purchased from Guy Dorian, um, to be a part of our figure. So that's pretty cool homage to like figure history for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, Guy Dorian actually did the trading card art for the, um, the actual. Uh, packaging that will be shipping um so yeah we had the macho man that was the unreleased macho man finally bringing it out to the public uh so that was available for two weeks alongside with a glow in the dark trinity um oh so yeah nice man so, those are uh... now we've go ahead now we've we finished that up with that pre-order those figures are in production right now and we are now focusing on the big rubber guys. Yes, those big, beautiful, is, big rubber guys. <laughs> uh, which is um, Macho Man and Andre the Giant. And Andre the Giant, you get the option of choosing to want black singlet or blue singlet or both. Yeah. Poses came out great. Uh, they wanted, really did. Yeah. Wh- what was the story behind going into choosing the poses? All right. Um, oh, there was a lot of back and forth. Yeah, so we didn't want Macho to be too similar to his actual LJN release, so that was mm-hmm. one. And then the thing with Andre, which which Knick could probably elaborate on, because I think we'll the decision we made, I think we'll take a hit in the back end because we didn't want anybody in the LJN line. If you look back, if they have any kind of height to them, they're bent at the knees, like Hogan yep. and Andre, right, uh, Big John Stud, right? Big John Stud. We were like, you know what? let's make a true to form Andre. That's going to tower over your other figures. Like you know, his true height, make him truly be the giant. So we think, I mean, we're going to, you know, can it can elaborate, like I said, but uh, like the packaging is going to have to be a little altered and things like that. And, but we were like, you know, it's worth it to make it that much more of a eye catching product, you know, and something worthwhile for people. So that, that's where that thought went into for that. Mm-hmm. And then macho, we just wanted to, uh, you know, update, like, you know, his, his LJN's kind of like, his early WWF run, we wanted him to be more of the established era. He's a, he's a big deal. Top guy, macho man. Those figures came out great because it looks like it's like a, an upgraded version for the LJNs nowadays. And they came out fantastic. Like look at Andre's face, the sideburns and the, yeah, it looks great, man. Yeah, It's so good. Like it literally looks like it will tower over the LJN Hogan and like really yeah. be that WrestleMania yeah. three on it. <clears throat> That's what we're really hoping for. Yeah. And, and surprisingly as simple as you think Andre would be, I think it's, and it could probably elaborate on this too. It was the most <laughs> difficult we've had, like, I guess because his body's so unique, you know, like he really has like a really small pecs and kind of like he's not muscular, but he's ginormous. It's just like it's very hard. It was hard yeah. to the back and forth. The sculpting on him must yeah. have been pretty difficult, huh? Well, there was like a lot of versions of him where we're like, you know, we're just looking at it going, something's just off about this. And it takes a big, you know, a collaborative effort of our whole team to be like, wait, something's just not right about this. And we keep going and going and going until we feel like it's right. Mm-hmm. And then you got to get every yeah. detail down because like th- his hands are open on the uh, prototype that Michael just showed. You got to figure out if mm-hmm. you want a hand closed, you want right. every decision. So yeah, that looks yeah. good. So uh, this was actually designed by TTD and then the sculpting is done by uh, Brian Beatty. Okay. So, um, Brian, Brian Beatty is now doing all of our big rubber guys. So 
he's excellent to work with. So he, he's he a legendary makes... sculptor. Has been around for twenty years, I believe. So he's he's got a lot of um, a lot of awesome stuff on his resume. So it was pretty cool when we yeah. were able to to snag him. Mm-hmm. So you guys, yeah, so uh, you you guys went into doing the uh, big rubber guys. Like, was there any hesitancy to do that, or did, were you guys like we're doing this? Um, I mean, Kinnick was pretty adamant that it, we could get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, it came with obstacles and things like that. Like, um, we couldn't find a factory that would make it one piece, like a traditional LJN. Mm-hmm. But we think the way we make them, it's pretty seamless. You can't tell where the seams are, literally. So that's kind of like the cheat to it. Um, that gets it done. Mm-hmm. Where I mean, I don't think anyone's even really spotted it yet on any, you know. But we couldn't. <laughs> Couldn't yeah. find a factory to do it like they did it back in the day. Um, but yeah, it's 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 been like anything else. It's just growing pains. I mean, obviously, uh the shipping and the weight was something that we had to take into yep. to account. Right. That w- right. wouldn't be, you know, very easy. Um, but like I said, we have an incredible team. Like TTD designs these things. You know, uh Knick is the one who's literally doing all the dirty work, talking to China, making sure that they understand what we want. And now we have Ryan Beatty sculpting, so it's it's pretty incredible. I take it you're up quite early for those uh, emails back and forth with overseas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but I can also uh, attest for this that I have very weird sleeping habits. So uh, it, it works true. out fine for me. <laughs> Dude. He maybe like a year ago, he sent me a couple screenshots of him, and I was like, okay, I'm not. Wow. Okay. I like I I, I appreciated what Kinnick did, but after that, I was like, I really appreciate what this guy does for the company because I don't know how he does it. So I take a cat nap like every two hours, like Kramer on Seinfeld a couple times. <laughs> I I I I'll probably pass out like around one o'clock in the morning, maybe midnight, and then I'll sleep for like two or three hours, and then I wake up and then I'm I'm ready to go. Man, I, I drink a cup. I drink a <laughs> cup of coffee and then. Uh... Kinnick has never not answered one of my texts in our four year relationship <laughs> at, at any hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have like a. And there is a certain hour where his uh, his phone will give you that do not disturb like message, but he always writes back. So I don't even know why he puts that on. Yeah. It's so that like I can try to help me go to sleep, but it doesn't really work because I'm still looking okay. at my phone. <laughs> uh, there you go. Oh man. Well, there's uh, one uh, there's one week left on those pre-orders for the Macho Man yeah. or the Macho Man and the Andres. Uh one week, uh price point fifty dollars. Yeah, so it's uh fifty dollars for Macho shipping. Man, it's fifty it's with free shipping. Uh it's fifty five for Andre because he is taller. And he weighs a lot more, um, so there's a lot more material that's going into him. Makes Plus, uh, it's, just, <laughs> it's just so much more that that's going in. So we are actually um, how I set it up was the lowest price point possible for the consumer because we we acknowledge that um, everyone's trying to scramble uh, scramble and try to save some money. So we're trying to make it as affordable as possible for the consumers. Well, we appreciate that, man. And it uh, comes with a protective case for the the card as well, right? It doesn't come with the protect the the, the protector. We sell those protectors separately. The so protectors are separate. Them, um, yeah. So, um, but they're twenty five dollars for a set of four for big rubber Got guys. It. Got it. And uh, those can hang have... or display on a shelf. Yes. Exactly. Got it. Yeah, and, and, and the pa- the packaging itself is resealable. You know, it's a bubble with a slide in card, so. Take care of your also, MOC and loose collectors. Yes, and it also yeah, helps perfect. with durability and shipping and things like that. Got it. But we, we do have protectors also for uh, major bendies. So the same way we have them for the ECW figures. <laughs> I literally uh, made can I get those made for my personal use, but now we sell them. <laughs> but yeah. and, yeah. and it's so freaking annoying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but um, we have the ECW protectors. We have the Hasbro uh, tag team protectors, and we will have Hasbro single uh, carded protectors coming in probably about two to three weeks. Awesome. Nice. And those weren't the only figures that you showed off this past week. Well, 
those were showed off a while back, but that's just going to segue over to the British Bulldogs that you showed off this past Tuesday or Wednesday night. Uh, Scott, if you want to bring them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, don't you have them? I do. Oh. Uh, hold on one sec, Scott. Yeah, go ahead. There, go for it. There's Davey Boy. This is Davey Boy. And Love it. That's Matilda. so cool. He you can package him with the bulldog under his arm. Yeah, so it's gonna be able to have Matilda's gonna be able to sit at the floor like you'd want like a dog to be, or Davey could pick <laughs> her up and have it under his arm to pose with. And Dynamite Kid. Oh, Those that's so good. good. On yeah. the back, so, you get that UK representation. Those look yeah. so good, man. Yeah, um, we're super excited about them. What was the decision behind the uh, going with the white tights? Because, I mean, basically the Bulldogs had, <clears throat> excuse me, the red, they had the blue, and they had the white, and then they had some trunks over. Um, what was yeah. the decision to go with all white? Just to do an updated version. You know, like everything, if we're going to do a guy that's already been in the line, we have to put some meat on the bone, right? There's got to be a reason to take a bite. So yeah, right. Um, that was the idea there to make them a little more toyetic, make them pop up, you know, updated version of what you had as, as a child. And then the other thing is LJNs aren't so common anymore. Like most people, even if you want them, you're going to pay astronomical prices for some of these LJNs. So mm-hmm. it's pretty cool to like be able to, you know, buy an Andre the giant with a black strap, buy the British bulldog and uh, dynamite kid. So we think that's cool too. Yeah, we had a gentleman on a couple of weeks ago who has a uh, LJN podcast, and uh, he was talking. He was talking about how when he does his customs, he's already spending like eighty bucks on an LJN yeah, it's, or it's crazy, wh- whoever right? it yeah. may be. So, yeah. yeah, those look good. I love the pose. Love the Mat- Matilda that comes under uh, Davy Boy's arm. That's awesome, man. It's the perfect accessory. It is right. Yeah, it is. Yep. I love it. That's great. Are there any chance of variants in the future? I don't know how long you have a deal with them to make figures for. But is there any thought to maybe doing them in different tights, different poses later on? I, I was going to bring to the team that I would like to do the baby blue. At some yeah, point. yeah, 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 for sure. For those sure. were our, those were definitely our favorite tights of theirs. And we always were a yeah. fan of the baby blue tights back in the day. Junkyard mm-hmm. Dog wore them. Rock and Roll Express wore them. So we were always right. a fan of those uh, those tights. But uh, Scott, if you want to bring up the images. Yeah, we got some close-ups of them. So let me bring those up here. So... Uh, there we go. Okay, the uh, Dynamite Kid. I love the pose on him. What was go into that? Like, how did you guys all collaboratively collaboratively come together and uh, decide on that one? It's almost a uh, CD. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the sculpting is kind of like I said. T- it's TTD's imagination, and then Brian Beatty's sculpting. So we kind of go off of that. But like, this is one they. He kind of came to us with that, and we were like, there was no, you know, revisions. We were kind of like, that's awesome, perfect. And then we all loved the idea that Davey could hold Matilda. We just thought that was pretty different. Yeah. Have yeah. you guys had any uh, issues signing anybody or, or like any trouble getting so, dynamite or anything? Uh, I mean, honestly, that's the the luxury of a, a lot of what Matt and I bring to the table in this toy business mm-hmm. is that I think in April for Matt. And then in July, for me, it would be 20 years that we've been wrestling. Wow. And, uh, Congratulations. Like, that's that, a thank huge you. accomplishment. Thank you. And that's a real 20 years of, like, wrestling every goddamn weekend. So, like, we, we've <laughs> not made... sitting at a know, desk all day. <laughs> that's a, yeah. But, I mean, I, you know what I mean? It's not like we're an independent wrestler who hasn't left his town. Like, we've, we've really made a go of it. And luckily, and we've been blessed, and we've made a lot of great friendships and connections. And it's almost like... It would be nuts to think of like who could we not track down at this point, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Between the amount of people, and uh, it's really paid off in the sense that, like, even like, and Knick can talk about this. Like, we just saw I did New York Comic Con, I was signing, we had to be signing with Demolition, so we were able to. We brought them their checks for what their royalties, what they were paid <laughs> nice. for the big rubber guys. We brought them their finished samples, and then they were so complimentary and appreciative. It was just the coolest thing, and I was like, I just presented Smash. With the LJN that he never got yeah. years ago. I'm still not over was, that. Right? It was just, and I don't think he is either, but it was just like yeah. a really cool, it was just something I never thought I'd be able to do in my life, but it was just, it was just a really cool moment, you know, just to be it able was, to do that, and, you know? It was so cool because, like, 
first of all, I got to meet these guys that I used to watch on TV. And then uh, they were just, they held Lily out of products, looked me dead straight in the eye and said, this has to be the best figures of us ever. And I was oh, like, wow, that is fucking cool. Mm-hmm. And they were just so nice about everything. Cause like every time I saw them later on in the convention, cause I was there the whole week, they would stop me and be like, yo, those figures are fucking awesome. Literally, outside of the Javid Center, I'm buying a hot dog. Here comes Axe and Smash. Like, <laughs> those figures are fucking great. <laughs> uh, that's so awesome. And, then, and the fact yeah, and that I, you can put I, the masks think, with them, too, is just such a great touch. I and I think that. that, like, at the end of the day, like, unless you're Dolph Ziggler and you have a heart of, you know, pure darkness, like, having action <laughs> figure matters to people. You know what I mean? It's a big accomplishment. And it's a It's a very, you know, flattering thing that i think a lot of people in the wrestling business really care about you know mm-hmm. so it's cool to bring that to some people yeah, yeah that's awesome and michael all the hard work that you've done when they tell you that that's got to be like worth it right there i mean it is that's so rewarding this is i'm, I'm ha- i have more rewarding feelings doing this than i've had anything else in my fucking career mm-hmm. um given i only probably really sold paper and shitty uh, uh oh, pills <laughs> i'm not gonna say the name of the company i worked for those will not be named <laughs> those that won't be named but it, it is so cool because like e- even on saturday night when um we went to the uh brian had a cap show in melville i went there and i got to hang out with sabu and he was signing a bunch of his figures and he was just so appreciative of everything and just kept on saying how grateful he was that uh, we made a figure of him. It's just, these are guys that I used to watch on TV daily. I looked up to, and now they're just blowing smoke up my ass. <laughs> <It's> cool. <laughs> Take it, man. Just accept the compliments. There yeah. you go. Dude. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Um, I've talked to a few wrestlers and it's kind of funny how back in the eighties, you know, they never talked about toys nowadays or video games or video games. And now all the wrestlers are talking about the toys and video games. I mean, I I've explained this my whole career because Matt and I were like so young when we started and we were like thrown to the trenches Mm -hmm. and we were such fans. Like we're all the same age. Like wrestling was so romanticized there's video games and bed sheets and fucking toys and everything you can imagine growing up and we're in the locker room of these guys who like all they had was like a black and white fucking magazine at at, at the most <laughs> you know so they just didn't right. understand it they thought like we were like the biggest dweebs and marks and it's like it's just different you know it's 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 different for us the way you know our passion for this hits a little different than the way it does for you that's all and now everyone's like that pretty much you know yeah yep. somebody made I, I think it was our good friend brian breaker he made the joke he goes i don't think arn anderson and rick rude were talking about toys or galoobs or no. Hasbro's or anything oh, when they were no. driving down the road you know <laughs> no hell no yeah <laughs> yeah can you but picture rick rude having a conversation being pissed off that galoob didn't make an action figure of him well, <laughs> arn was, i do know for a fact arn was pissed about the bald spot and the galoob i've heard him talk <laughs> about that <laughs> Yeah, and I think he was so mad that they made the running change with the the cover up. The cover up. <laughs> I think I, I I'm pretty sure because he complained. Yeah. Uh, Canada, going back to the Bulldogs, quick question for you. Yeah. Are there going to be two packs? Are they going to come two per card, or is it going to be solo? Um, I'm still debating it. I was going to say we're still kind of working on that. <laughs> we don't have confirmation. <laughs> if, if it's, uh, yeah. Um, I, uh, my, okay. my thing is I would want it to look like our packaging how it is now but a two pack I don't want to make that ginormous LJN WWE box. Mm-hmm. oh my god that thing was that thing will take a looks like a flat screen TV like it's too big you know? <laughs> it would take up all I wouldn't want to do, yeah I wouldn't want to do that to anybody or ourselves and ship it but yeah we're still trying to figure that yeah. out okay I'm I, I'm thinking single carded for my OCD because we already have so many already on single cards mm-hmm. like why just not continue it in that path and have right. Matilda come with Davy Boy uh, but I understand it is cool to have it in that two pack uh, it's literally probably going to be a decision that we make last minute well and I also like think most, <laughs> most depending, things on what, we do. depending on what the factory tells us about it too you know 
if it can be done or not. I'm sure if it can be done or not, or yeah. one costs an exceptional amount of money and the other doesn't. Mm-hmm. That kind of opens the we'll flood see. doors, though, doesn't yeah. it? Because all future two packs, you'd have to to make the same consideration. Like if you do another demolition, or you. That's what I'm saying. We should have made demolition two pack then. So it's like if that's that's what's making me lean towards single pack. Keep it single. I bet. Yeah. You. yeah. For now. Yeah. Right. Right. And Scott, do you have other pictures? I have some videos that can accept me. Let me bring those up real quick. So what Hasbro's don't you guys have signed so far? I keep a list on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain ones. I mean, actually, someone put it in our Facebook group today, but it's it's a Rick Rude sign, but it says to Bernard. Oh, no. Rude, which I'm like, I can't do that like i can't even though i it's a holy grail and something i've literally almost like never seen i can't do it um you might have to change your ring name to bernard dude yeah like what <laughs> i mean I can't, I can't rationalize that but yeah <laughs> so rick rude's a big one texas tornado andre the giant i don't think i've ever seen a giant gonzalez or a ludwig borga autographed i don't think I don't, so there's a couple of crazy ones Oh man, I uh, can't go into uh, talking about these, man. Any any details or anything? Or Did we just saw yeah, so, uh, here's Andre now. That's Andre the Giant. Um, see the nine. This is and then... this is my favorite big rubber guy this we've ever done. So great. And this was my idea. I said we we have Ric Flair signed for X amount of years. Mm-hmm. We got to do something different. Let's do '80s promo Flair like that. Everyone knows and loves but i've never really had a great figure to represent you know that that is 305 rick flair yeah yeah exactly exactly 605 eastern time dude 605 605 for me and connect yeah yeah that's a great that's a great looking flair man good job on that one especially in the suit because we've gotten so many flares right over the years i'm like we got to catch people's attention with this you know just a flare and trunks whatever anyone could do that and we will do it but Yep. Like out the gate, we got to do 80s promo flair. That's really Love like it. become a thing of its own and like pop culture and rap yes. songs and whatever. Yeah. So very much so. Very much yeah. so. Yeah. And, uh, and that was actually the rubber sample. So that's um, the pre production sample for before they go into actual production of um, the figure. But um, so what you're seeing there is probably what will be in your hands when you receive it. Okay. Nice. Mach- the pre-orders for Macho and Andre and this Friday. Yep. Uh, estimated ship date? I Roughly think, ballpark? I I think I put uh, March on the website. Okay. March 2024. I expect it to be in hand much earlier. I just... Just in case there's any issues, I say March. <laughs> just say yeah, yeah. Chinese, Chinese, Chinese New Year, guys. Chinese New Year. <laughs> exactly. Chinese New Year. Yeah. Hey, dude, That's just, what I'm actually concerned about. Hey, dude, yeah. just say Mar- March of 25. Just say it and then if they get it earlier. It's <laughs> like when you get earlier, yeah. it's like, hey. Yeah, God, it's like, that, would, awesome. that would still be earlier than most pre-orders that go on these days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's like when you go to Outback and they say it's a 45-minute wait and you get seated in 20 minutes. It's like a win. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Makes you feel good. Pre-order for Bulldogs? It'll start in December. Beautiful. Um, and, I mean, we you can see that we have the resin samples already in hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a few co- corrections that we're going to make uh, for a Davy Boy. And that will probably only take about a week, two weeks to get done. Uh, and then the mold process can start. So that will be in November. December, we'll put it up for pre-order, and that means the production time will take about three to four weeks once we put the uh, order in with the factory, and it'll take like another month for it to arrive. So I don't think it's going to be that too far off from the actual pre-order time. Cool. Uh, awesome. Scott, just go ahead and pre-order mine for Christmas. Thanks, dude. Yeah, anyways. It, no <laughs> what, what, a nice, what a nice gift. Uh, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, with all these third-party companies, who do you think is missing? Like, is there certain wrestlers that you're like, oh man, I wish somebody would just grab so and so? Good question. You don't want them tipping their hand too much, Jeff, because they can. That too, yeah. I probably, oh, yeah. I probably should answer this honestly, right? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure, Hastel Toys is listening. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's it's obviously like tiptoeing around those legends contracts, you know, and, and mm-hmm. we've learned through this process that everyone's different. You know, there's exclusive and non-exclusive ones. But Do you have an that? era that you would lean more heavily towards, you think, like 80s, 90s? I mean, you know, at a- guys, I'm an ECW guy, so that's that's my be-all, end-all. So <laughs> we, we just did uh, the first line of Extreme Bendies with Tommy Dreamer, Sandman, Sabu, Raven. Mm-hmm. They each have bloody variants. It was a huge hit. We're working on Series 2 of that. Nice. Um, which we're very excited about. We already have most, pretty much th- three of the four talent signed for that um so that that's exciting for me um mm-hmm. i think one of the problem with the bendy sometimes is i think because it's a very autographable item when the talent is deceased it's kind of like a little less of a hit for us unless they're you know macho man randy savage or somebody right. legendary like i would love to do like a bald mahoney major bendy oh, uh, yeah. chris Can- chris candido you know some of the guys that have passed um that's that's something that i personally would like to get done Okay. Well, I'm sure you guys get a lot of requests too from fans, right? Like, oh, you guys should do so and so. Where do you see the most requests coming from? Like, for what specific era do you get a ton of ECW? Um, I, I, I think the ECW one. I mean, obviously, like I'm biased because I love ECW so much, but it was my idea and I was pushing for it, and then it sold very well. And I think it kind of sold Matt Cardona that they sold so well that we. It's nice to get that back. Yeah, yeah, it'll move. Yes, that we can move on with that. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. That that was a big big win for me. Nice. Yeah, Um, but yeah, I do think the feedback from the ECW line was pretty 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 cool. Um, It was cool to do like I I like when we can do Ben Bendy's that are little missing links. You know, like Macho Man was supposed to be in Series One. We made. Brian Pillman and he fits right in with your, you know, the, you know, Brett and Owen and Davey. You know, it's a heart foundation yep. or double J in 95. We did with the straps. You know, I, I like that kind of stuff. Gangrel, you know, he could have fit in. Um, So those ones are fun for me. Gotcha. Wait. Well, I mean, you're never going to top smash in my opinion, in the LJN or the big rubber guys that I've complained about this on the show so many times, <laughs> like LJN literally uh, set out to ruin our childhood by not I mean, giving us the other half of demolition. And you guys, you you filled that hole in the collection, and honestly, in my opinion, I don't know that you'll top it, but I want to see you try. <laughs> I would love, keyword, to do Brother Love, who's off the table at the moment, uh, yeah. legal, legally, but that would yeah. be a big get for me. And actually, uh, I meant to bring this to the team. I think Bad News Brown is something that we can get done, which I think would be pretty cool. No. Oh. We literally yeah. had that conversation last week. Like, if you could add them to the line, and then you pick out of four names – uh, top two for us was Butch Reed. The other one was Bad News Brown. That's nice. a huge name to add in. Absolutely, wow. that would be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I know, not... I know, I know another party that has Bad News signed, but uh, probably not too exclusive. So he's doable. Excellent. Wait, waiting on that ta- Todd Champion and uh, Firebreaker Chip. No, we're not. Ooh, whoa, Jesus. <laughs> no, we're not. Oh, we're <laughs> Nobody's not? waiting oh. on that, Jeff. Only you. Oh, oh man. Oh, sorry, sorry. I apologize. I got a Ranger, Ranger Ross, r- though. <laughs> Still a possibility. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I got to read the room better. Sorry. Yeah, uh, you do. <laughs> Michael, how about you? Anybody that you would like to see? Because there's a lot of third-party companies. Is there anybody you'd like to see? Like, for us, I, one of the ones we would love to see is Beverly Brothers. Yeah. Um. So that's actually a big request that I get. Um, I probably get requests for like a laundry list of names every day. Through the, yeah, but sometimes uh, it's like pod. make Bret Hart. And it's like, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, come no, on, guys, like, <laughs> go to Target. Yeah. Uh, you did Marty Jannetty. And... You did Marty Jannetty. Why don't you do Sean? Yeah, okay, well, uh, uh, we might I would be love guilty to of that one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would love and... to, but well, the balls in the now, right? To know... And then Brian wants to know why I'm drinking so early in the day. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I would actually like to do an Andy Kaufman. Oh, you have mentioned that, yeah. Nice. That's a that's yeah. a good callback right there, man. In a like a bendy or a big rubber guy, or what are your? I, I would big do big rubber both. guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Big rubber guy is the is definitely the the more lucrative one, I think. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> Totally would fit the era too. Yeah, I do, I do want to. As the line grows, I want to dabble into eighties NWA talent. Nikita Koloff. <laughs> yeah, we so might have signed one overlooked. this week. Actually, yeah. 
Ooh. <laughs> Uh, a WC, yeah. or excuse me, an NWA 80s guy. I'll just leave it at that. We might have signed an NWA talent from the 80s this week, dude. He got the Mulkies. <laughs> Thanks. <Damn it>. They're <laughs> in. What? 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 <laughs> I love the Mulkies. What? Who doesn't? No, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. So let the uh guessing games begin because it could be Nikita, could be Tully totally Blanchard. A... Yeah. Barry Wyndham. You, you, you go on and on, guys. All right, all right, I mean, we right. do have to fill in around that Ric Flair interview table. There you so, go. I mean, <laughs> there you go, man. Good job. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate you guys coming on. But before we go, Brian, we actually have, we, we all know that you're a huge New York Mets fan. Yep. So I thought I'd pull some trivia for you. And these oh, might boy. be some easy, easy layup questions, but. Okay. I I was I was at work rushing, so uh, bear All with right. me. All sure. right, all right. So for New York Mets, who scored the winning run in the infamous Bill Buckner era game for the Mets in the '86 series? Uh, it'll be Ray Knight. Very good. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Who was the last New York Met to win the National League MVP? And I'll give you four choices: <laughs> David Wright, <laughs> Strawberry, Pete Alonso, or none of the above. None of the above. Very good. Two for two so far. Dude okay. knows his mess. Yeah. Uh, who was the last Cy Young winner for the Mets? Gooden, Dickey, DeGrom, or Tom Seaver? Ooh, DeGrom. Very good. Yep. Man, three for three. But yeah, D- three. Dickey had one. Dickey had one too, but DeGrom was the, the more recent. Yeah. Dickey did in 2012. Dickey was Blue Jays? Yeah. No, no, he was with the Mets. Oh, he yeah. won it with the Mets. Yeah. Yep. Ah, okay. Yeah. It was bizarre. We're huge baseball fans over here, so uh, I know. Yeah, I, I thought it'd be. Uh, I thought this would be fun. All right. Do you, get, do you guys play the grid every day? Uh no. I was doing that for a while, and then I kind of got lost, and I was like, "All right, oh, I guess." I like literally have my morning coffee and do my grid every day. <laughs> yeah. Jumping on the app right away. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Pete Alonso, one of three players to win the home run derby back to back years. Which years did he win it? 2018 and 19, 19 and 21, 21 and 22, or 22 and 23? Well, he didn't win 23 because it was the first time he lost. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, so it's 19. 18 and 19. 18, 19. 19 and 21. COVID. Wait, no. Tw- 19, and 19, 20, 20 and tw- 21. 19, yeah. 20, 21. Yeah, well, right. 20, uh, 20 was canceled because of uh, COVID. Right, but, you're right, but, right. So your final answer is B? Yeah. Dude, you're spot on. Okay. <laughs> Man. Yep. I'm a serious baseball fan. Or serious math fan, too, for sure. Yeah, you definitely know your stuff, Except man. this year, they were god-awful in the embarrassment. Yeah. But you still got Pete Alonso. I love that guy. I do too, but uh, my sources are telling like there was a lot of stuff about him being like not a good locker room guy, and I didn't believe it. But some of my sources have confirmed that this possibly may be true. Uh oh, I know. Okay. I was, you know, it was super disheartening and or alarming. I don't know uh, if you guys saw, but Tommy Pham came out and had an interview saying it was the least hardworking team he'd ever been on. Oof, Tommy Pham said that. Tommy Pham said that about the Mets. Yeah. Wow. Twenty twenty three Mets. I was like, man, when you're a fan, that's a hard thing to hear. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, Tommy Pham's rum- been on like six teams, so that's saying a lot. Yeah, that is saying <laughs> yeah. something. Yeah. Well, the yeah. rumor is is they're in on Otani, so I without a shadow of a doubt, the Mets are gonna offer him the most money. Will he take it? I don't know, but they will offer him the most money. You you think so, huh? Yes, because Uncle Stevie doesn't fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly after last season. Holy crap. Yeah, no, yeah. Backed up but the that- Brinks truck. But that didn't work at all. Uh, it did not, yeah. unfortunately. No. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> and last question: Who is the only solo pitcher to throw a no hitter for the Mets? Degrom, Seaver, Johan Santana, or R. A. Dickey? Johan Santana. Man, was... you know your New York Mets stuff. Yeah. Five for five, man. Nice. Yeah. Thought we throw up a little change up, change up over to you, man. But uh, uh, that was great fun. Great job, Thanks. man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, man, no. As I said, I'm, they might I'm have been serious. Lamps. Oh, hell yeah. Not, they weren't layoffs. I'd call them in between. <laughs> they were about yeah. a 3.5, we'll say. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why don't you guys get your plugs out of the way one more time? All right. That's Connect. 
<laughs> you want me to do it? <laughs> Macho yeah, Man Randy it. Savage, Andre the Giant, Big Rubber Guys on sale. One more week to go. Majorpodmerch.com. Uh, I mean, they're they're incredible. I, I wouldn't miss out. The pre-order is the order. That's the one thing that we always have to stress uh, for people who are unaware. Like, this is it. So if you don't get them from us, you're going to pay secondary prices on eBay and you don't want to be caught doing that. So mm-hmm. get them all you can. Start your Big Rubber Guy collection. Um, we're super proud and excited about them. You should be. They are fantastic. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Panic, as I always say, man, it's a pleasure having you on. So Brian? It's a pleasure being here. Yeah, we always look forward to seeing you, dude. And Brian, yeah. it's, it was a pleasure having you on, man. As we always tell Canik, you guys have open door policies to come on. And even if you want to just talk baseball, we can do that. We'll just shoot the shit, you know, stuff like that. But- of course, man. I, I just want to say uh, when I got re-signed in, by WWE in 2016, I had this weird little, like, ritual. Like, on Wednesday mornings when I flew home, I would always listen to you guys. So oh, I'm I just sorry, want to say, dude. you know. I'm sorry, No, man. just saying you guys were on the ground floor and you kind of – open the doors for what Matt and I are doing now. So I just want to say thank you for everything you guys have done. And uh, I appreciate it. Much appreciated, man. We, you, uh, we greatly lot, appreciate man. it. It means Thanks. a lot to us. So uh, be safe tomorrow night. Have fun at the impact tapings and gauntlet for the gold. I'm going to be the number one contender and your ratings are going to go up. This is going to be great. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, baby. Let's yeah. get this done. Timing there you is go. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> guys, as always, thank you for coming on. And uh any you guys have an open door policy anytime. Cool, man. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you, man. Appreciate it.